Chapter 11 For the next 30 years, the Duck and Dutch lived in Paris. They gave parties and traveled around the world, but they never went back, back to Buckingham Palace. When King George died in 1952 and Queen Mary died in 1961, Edward returned to Windsor for a few days, but Wallace stayed in France. It's your family, she said, not mine. But then, in 1966, the Duke and Dutch meet Queen Elizabeth, the daughter of King George, at a small party in London. After 30 long years, it was time to forget the past. Elizabeth kissed the Dutch and touched her arm. Then she turned to Duke and said, Wallace is so beautiful, uncle. I think you are, you are a lucky man. That day, Elizabeth was very kind to us. Edward wrote a letter, but why couldn't my mother or my brother say those words to me? On BBC television in 1969, the Duke and Dutch spoke about their life together. Do you argue? Someone asked them. No, not really, the Dutch replied. But there is one thing about my husband that I really don't like. He is always late. It doesn't matter if he is meeting a queen, a president or a film star. He can never arrive on time. I don't know why. I have tired to change him but it is just not possible. The Duke smiled and touched her hand. I know that I am often late, he said. But on our wedding day, I arrived at the church 20 minutes before you. I was early and you were late. Yes, that's true, the Dutch said. And they both laughed. You could see real love in their eyes. One newspaper wrote, they were on television, but they forgot about the cameras and the million of people who are watching. They are just two people in love. The Dutch was famous for her jewelry after my husband. She once said, I love jewelry more than anything else in the world. And after 35 years with the Duke, she had hundreds of pieces which come from all over the world. I have never met a more beautiful woman than Wallace Edward wrote. And I love giving her presents. She has given me so much happiness. I buy her jewels to say thank you. In May 1972, the Duke became ill when the doctor arrived. He listened to Edward's heart and then said, How many cigarettes do you have a day, sir? About 40 or 50, the Duke replied. But please don't ask me to stop. I have smoked for 60 years and I cannot change now. The night Edward called Varys in the room, I feel very tired. He said, I am afraid I love you. I have been very happy with you and you have been a wonderful wife. When I die, I want you to take my body back to Windsor. Will you do that for me? Of course, she said. And they both began to cry. The Duke of Windsor died one hour later with Wallace by his side. Three days later, a blue aeroplane arrived in Paris. Wallace ben went back to England with Duke's body and for the first time in life, she entered Buckingham Palace. A week later, the Dutch returns to France and for the next 14 years, she lived alone in Paris. The big house was dark, the doors were locked and she did not go out. In the afternoons, she sat in the dining room with Edward's love letters. They were so beautiful, she said. I read them again and again. But then, in 1986, Wallace became ill. She went to a small hospital near the house. And a few days later, she died. Without Edward, she once wrote, my life was empty. She was burned in England next to her husband at Windsor. It's a strange thing, one newspaper wrote, when they were alive, the Duke and Dutch could never live in Britain. It was only in that that they could be there together.